Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another Frostpunk guide. Today, we're going to be looking at five more simple tips on how to improve your gameplay in Frostpunk. Now, before I start this video, I would like to mention something and how humbled and I can't even explain the feeling of the last video that I made of this. The first ever video that's on this channel, five simple tips to improve gameplay in Frostpunk is currently sitting at 22,000 views as of making this video. And I'm currently at 200 subscribers and I want to thank every single person who has watched that video and the other Frostpunk guides and every other video that I've made and subscribing. I appreciate it and it motivates me to make more videos and there are more videos coming. So thank you. Now, that's enough of me rambling. So today we're going to be talking about um, middle to preparing for end game. The last one we looked at the very early game and today we're going to be looking at some um, more important things. And the first step is heating. And I think heating, as among many things that you're going to have to keep an eye on, is something that you really need to keep a close watch on. There you can see there are six different options. Now you want to be seen on the left hand side of this little section because throughout the gameplay and as you can see by this big generator it is comfortable which is the best you can be and all the rest are in the chilling. And what that means is that if you're stood right next to the generator right now you are nice and toasty but everywhere else in my settlement is on the border of becoming quite cold. Now. As in the top right, you'll notice the fluctuating temperature. That will dictate basically how cold or how warm your buildings are. And remember, the colder the buildings get, the more sick patients that you have. So what you want to be doing pretty much is making sure that you can stick in either the chilly, the comfortable, or the livable. Whichever, but make sure you stick up the left because you start getting problems with being on the right now there are certain things that can help you keep on the left hand side and that is the whole heating tab in the technology tree i probably advise to well put as much technology as you can and rush to the very end because the quicker you can get to the very end the easier it is for end game because once you start getting to middle to end game it starts getting quite cold maybe sort of like 60 degrees minus 70 degrees minus um and what will happen is if you don't have a lot of technology in this heating tree, you will get a lot of people sick and will die. And it will really impact your gameplay because that's less people for other sort of resources like food and things like that. Now, there are other ways that you can work on the heating and that's sort of um, improving buildings like improved insulation and in gathering, um, cook houses, um, insulation in... Um, medical posts and infirmaries and then the most important thing is the tents bunk houses and houses so houses are the best you can get for your workforce and they offer a base heat level but then you can look at even more insulation so when it does get colder you have a perfect opportunity to make sure that your workers and your engineers and children are nice and cozy in the game and it goes without saying that you need coal to keep your generator up because that little thing in the middle, if that goes out, that means everything you have will eventually go cold. And you want to make sure that you keep it running. And in order to do that, you need resources. And in order to do that, you need workforce. So it's a constant balancing act of heat, resources and food, which you'll soon learn. Now, I've put a video up here of my um, extreme sort of endless game mode to show you a few different tips and tricks on what you can really do so as you can see I generally clump my buildings together and they're specific buildings so all on the left hand side here are all houses and what you want to do in a new home and any other scenario that you do is you want to clump your houses together because when you get steam hubs which is a technology you get very early on you can clump the steam hubs around your houses to give you bonus um, heating so you want to do that with your other workable buildings as well so if you have like things like cook houses and medical posts and infirmaries and all your sort of manual things if you can clump them together the better because the later on in the game you get the closer your steam hubs are to all your houses the better 
Now I'm showing you an example of another scenario where the tech tree can really come in handy. The generator is about to switch off, but you'll realize that once it gets to minus 50, which is about to go up a little bit higher, the houses become livable again. And that's because I have researched the best insulation for those houses. So you don't necessarily need the generator to keep your people warm, but you definitely need it to keep your things like your infirmaries and your medical posts and all your workable buildings. This scenario on the right hand side where all the coal thumpers are very cold i've got automatons working on every single one because it's endless but the houses aren't generally the issue it's more so the other buildings that don't have the best insulation here's an example of the steam hubs that you can get clumping everything together so it's nice toasty and warm now in a new home scenario you don't have this much space but if you do something on a smaller scale with your houses and all your other workable buildings you'll become much more successful in surviving late game with your heating. Step number two is food. All about food. Now you have a few different options um, in the game uh, of how to gather food. You have a hunter's hut, hunter's hangar and also a hothouse. Now, Depending on which direction your gameplay is going, if you have a surplus of, say, steam cores, you could possibly go down the hothouse option because hothouses take one or two steam cores depending on which tech you've got. Um, if you've got a surplus of workers, you can go down the hunter's hangers, hunter's hut, uh, and work down that research. Now, you probably don't want to be going on both, especially in your first gameplay. If you get to a point where you can gather enough resources, maybe you can benefit from both. But you have a choice, really. If you have more workers, go down the Hunter's Hut, Hunter's Hangar option. If you want to focus more on steam cars, you can put it in the hot house. Now, a few different sort of tips that you can help the production of food is the Book of Laws Super Moonshine. Moonshine first because it helps reduce discontent and then soup because it allows you to create four times the amount of rations per raw food based on what you've got. And what you can do then is keep an eye on it in the economy and essentially see how much food you're producing based on how many rations you're gaining per day. And with the soup option, you do get a massive surplus of food. So I would definitely recommend probably going down that option for your first try. And most people will generally go down the hunter's hut first and the more sort of seasoned and experienced you get, you can dabble in it. But probably for your first gameplay, maybe look at hunter's hangers and hunter's huts first and save your steam cars for your automatons because you're probably going to need that later on in the line now remember when you get to the big freeze at the end of the game all food production is stopped regardless if you get hunter's hangers hunter's huts or hot houses so pick the best option for your gameplay maybe dabble in the soup book of law if you need it because at the end you're going to need as much food rations as possible so you pick whichever option you want to go down more steam cars go hot houses more workers go hunter's hanger step number three is all about exploration and outposts now I picked a gameplay where you see on the right hand side the incoming freeze because that is something you need to prepare for because it's on its way now on the map when you first start you will get one set of scouts and you have an option of where to go and on here there are a few that i've already explored which is grayed out and a few that i haven't so there's a nice spread now closer to the left hand side is where the gameplay takes you and you have different options to go to certain areas where you have refugees such as large convoy children's hideout sturdy shelter gloomy cave things like that um, and the game will eventually make you go to winter home which um, is a outpost now what an outpost is you can build a building that you can send a specific team to go and build something that will give you a regular supply of resources um, such as coal wood fish and steam cars now almost every single gameplay that i go down i generally pick steam cars unless i'm sort of you know testing things out because steam cars is something that you can't get from your own area you can get coal you can get wood you can get steel and you can get food from your main area but if you do struggle you can build the outpost and get them to send the resource across but steam cars is something you'll need all the way to the very end so if you look on the right hand side of the map you will see Tesla City and you will eventually go there and I would definitely advise going there probably after you've gathered your first few um, camps of for workers and engineers. So on the right hand side you'll find Tesla City. Now that is a random chance of getting in because it does require you to 
possibly have your workers die. There are some scenarios where you go to a certain outpost and your scouts can either do something or don't do something. If they do something, they have a chance of dying. So I would recommend saving um, the game just before that happens. You'll get to know which ones are which. But as soon as you open Tesla City and you're in there, you have the opportunity to open a outpost now an outpost is from the tech tree get it built you can only have one and make sure you get it over there because that will supply you with a regular supply of steam cores which for your first couple of gameplays is absolutely crucial to make sure you survive the first gameplay and every single little area that you go to on the map has some form of resource i think there's only a few that doesn't so i would recommend putting some um, technology into exploration and getting as many scouts out as you can to explore everywhere because the more resources you can get the better now you'll notice on this game mode um, the big freeze is coming and on the map essentially this really cool looking storm closes in on your main city and when the storm reaches past a certain point it freezes the little dot on the map and it won't allow you to go there anymore so it's essentially a race to see how fast you can get to all your different little areas on the map and get as many resources you can go so far out onto the right and so far out onto the left and sometimes you get better resources the further out you go but just be careful if the freeze does get to a point where your workers are slower than the big freeze you lose the scouts so uh, be careful on that one tip number four are the pesky londoners now a new home scenario you will eventually meet these lovely people um, it's usually around the time where they discover that winter home which is the left hand side of the um, frozen expanse that you travel um, when you find out that they're no more and the Londoners pop up on the left hand side of the screen and say we are going to get as many of the, the settlement the crew um, and we're going to get as many as we can take them away from you and go back to London and on the left hand side there'll be a gauge with a number and there'll either be arrows pointing up and the up to three hours are arrows pointing down up to three arrows and if it's pointing up it means they're gaining followers if it's pointing down it means they're losing followers um it's also around the same time that you get to either go down the faith or order tree now there are no right or wrong sort of trees to go down the order tree or the faith tree they have their benefits and they both have their um, negatives i'm going to make a video and um, it's on my list of showing sort of the benefits of both and which is the easiest one for me personally i always go down the faith tree now this is where discontent and hope play a massive factor in your gameplay because the higher discontent and lower the hope is the more chance the londoners have of gaining followers so um there is a whole video in itself about discontent and hope but the sort of easy way to explain it is do things for your sort of settlement your civilization that will benefit them so create the book of laws that will benefit them like public houses and more rations for uh, the sick and things like that and try not to do anything that will annoy them and also especially heating making sure you heat their homes because that's going to be a massive sort of play on whether or not the Londoners gain followers and at the end of it um, you'll either lose a few followers or the end sort of best scenario is the Londoners get destroyed and if you throw all your sort of time into the book of laws either the order tree or the faith tree you can get to a point where they will sort of work out the followers um, themselves and get rid of the Londoners completely so you can either do two things you can either um, sort of work on it at your own pace or rush into it as soon as it becomes available and they'll sort of fix it for you but also making sure that you've got enough heating and resources and not enough deaths and not a lot of sick people because all of those factors will play into gaining more followers for the Londoners and when it comes to it there's like a timeline and at the end of the timeline if they, they'll just take all the followers that they've got and at the very end if you do have sort of really big issues with heating and stuff the Londoners will gain a lot of your sort of population so try your hardest not to sort of lose them it is a bane of your existence to deal with the londoners especially on your first few gameplays because that's the last thing you want to be worrying about but it is a good mechanic and I, you know you do tend to sort of move past it and once you've played it more than once you'll you'll learn pretty quickly how to sort of best it but the basic sort of uh, strategy is um, put time into the one of the order or faith tree 
um, make sure you've got plenty of resources everybody's happy hopes really high discontent is really low and they'll just disappear without any problems at all and finally tip number five is stockpiling preparing for end game so once you've got rid of your pesky londoners and they've either taken half your population with you or you have uh, defeated them uh, you'll need to look towards the end game now the whole game is all centered around this big freeze and how to survive it so what you need to do is be mindful and, and, and prepare for that. Get ready for uh, the freeze to come. And there's a few ways you can do that. And there's a few things that you need to know about this big freeze. So as I mentioned earlier, um, things like food production stops when the freeze comes. And it will eventually get so cold that your workers will ask to stay home. And there'll be a point where they'll just be dying off if you keep them in the workplaces. So you might as well get them to stay at home anyway. So... In that time, when you have the freeze and the time coming up to it, you'll need to get as many um, resources as possible. Food um, and coal are priority. Wood is the sort of third priority and steel is the last priority. You will probably need steel unless you want to keep sort of researching things and maybe upgrading some houses if you haven't done already. Um, but the main thing is food and coal because you're going to be whacking that generator up to level four and you're going to be um, doing your best to, to get as many food um, rations out as possible. So spend some time to look into the tree, the uh, tech tree, and, and look at sort of what options you've got. How much time is it going to take for you to get to sort of tier five? How much time can you put into sort of researching um, the heat option, maybe take a few engineers out um, or maybe go and search for some engineers to get some more workshops up and running to get to a sale tier 5 as quickly as possible. And also look at the improved sort of hunter's huts and the improved hothouses um, and really do your best to uh, gather up as much food. Now one thing that you want to definitely look at is the resource depot, improved resource depot and large resource depot because... At the end of it when you stockpile as much food as you can and, and coal and stuff you are going to need it now why i say wood is the third priority is because um you have an option which is the charcoal kiln which allows you to burn wood for coal so if you do manage to sort of stockpile a lot of wood and you're not going to be building much in this sort of end game um, you're going to have all your infrastructure ready and you're going to have everything in place so you're not really going to be having any use for wood. So you can build some charcoal kilns to help with the coal distribution because, as I said, the generator is going to be a full whack. All your heating is going to be up to make sure you can survive it. Um, so pretty much that is what you want to be focusing on. Um, stockpiling as much resources. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about the end game, tips on how you can sort of survive the freeze and the sort of extra little sort of niches that happen at the end game such as um, a bunch of refugees coming to your camp and stuff like that so um, that'll be all for now i hope you enjoyed this video once again i really do appreciate the other video getting 23,000 likes now at the end of this recording it's gone up another thousand um, and i really appreciate it so i hope this one is as helpful as the last one and um, there'll be more for spunk guide coming out soon and um, but as always thanks very much hit that subscribe button hit the like button and write a comment and take care. I've been Rifi. See you soon. Bye-bye.